Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And usually on the channel, you see me playing the best vehicles and having some good results along with them, or see very skilled players of the World of Tanks community playing great tanks and having equally great results. Today, I want to mix it up a little bit, and I want to talk about one of the worst tanks in World of Tanks. It is the AMX 65T. This tier 8 French heavy tank has so many different reasons to hate it. Firstly, it's the last hurdle in the line before you get towards the tier 9, the AMX M451, which is a fantastic vehicle and probably one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game. So the fact that you have an absolute failure of a vehicle to play through at tier 8 is all the more frustrating for anyone out there who's seen some videos on the tier 9 and just knows what they have to look forward to. Apart from that, the statistics of the tank are just really mediocre in so many ways. You think by the look of the gun, by the way, one of the biggest pitfalls that people make on this tank is taking the 120mm gun instead of the 100mm gun on this vehicle. The 120mm gun is practically worse in every single way apart from alpha damage. Definitely use the 100 on this on this tank. But let's not talk about one of the pitfalls that people make, usually using the 120. When you look at the 100, you'd actually think it was pretty okay. 232 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds, 263 on its premium rounds, 300 alpha. Not great, but not bad for tier 8. The vehicle's also got a decent rate of fire, giving it 1,935 base DPM. Very nice for a tier 8 heavy tank. But when you consider that there's another French tank tree heavy tank in the game, the AMX 5100, that has this gun, but just loads up not one, not two, not three, not four, not even five, but six rounds in a magazine, which it can deliver, albeit in about 12 or 15 seconds. It's capable of annihilating any tier eight tank and taking off more hit points than any tier nine or tier 10 would ever want to give up to a tier eight vehicle. And so, ah, yeah. This tank doesn't have that special autoloader, which usually makes French vehicles great. Another thing that truly sucks about this vehicle is it's the hull of an AMX 5120, which is awful. It's easy to penetrate for pretty much everyone unless you're using your gun depression in this tank and then maybe you're going to be able to ricochet a shell or two. And it has possibly one of the most ridiculous looking horrific ugly turrets. You can pretty much sum up this vehicle at the back of it by taking a look at the fact that the rear of the turret just hangs over the hull. Now, when you're playing a tank that is this bad, you have to get a little bit clever. You have to try and use your game mechanics to be able to outplay your opponents. Here's a turtle. It's a tier 8 British premium tank destroyer that's probably one of the most dangerous tanks at tier 8 with one of the best win ratios to go along with it. And so what I decided to do is not go up in a window and expose the horrendous weak points that you have on top of this vehicle, but instead to try and drop back and try and play a supporting role to try and hold back our opponents. And using the little gaps that we have in the rubble there, we're able to deliver two rounds to a turtle in fairly quick succession, and they didn't even manage to get some harm back to us. Now, you don't ever want to have two tanks in a position here where the TNH-105-1000 is. If there are two tanks there, then that means the enemies can be able to develop a crossfire. By having at least one vehicle up here, that means they can't come around the corner for free. And also it means that if they decide to try and push over the high ground that we can see here, that I can come around the corner and support. Always try and create a crossfire against your opponents. And that is how we're going to make even a terrible tank like this shine. So. While I'm managing to get around here into the turtle, he's got two marks of excellence on their vehicle, so they can't be a slouch. But they probably didn't expect to receive a double tap there from me, the AMX 65T combined with the TNH 105-1000. So let me talk about the other things that really are just very lackluster about this tank. Starting with the view range, it's 370 meters view range. That's kind of what you would be getting on a on a Soviet tank, really, at tier 8. Although, then again, some Soviet tanks, like the IS-3 that we're shooting at right now, dip down to 350. So you can't even really spot for yourself. Also, the vehicle's gun depression, 8 degrees. It's not bad, but it's not comparable to a lot of the vehicles that have been going into the game recently. And also, to top it all off, the mobility of this vehicle. Limited to 40 kilometers an hour. But for some reason, it gets horrendous hidden ground resistances that mean that it never actually goes above 30 on any terrain types unless it is going downhill. And so 
when I was playing this game, I was thinking, Whoa, this is a bit of a challenge, right? Playing one of, if not the worst tanks at tier 8 and taking it out against my opponents, setting up an ambush, getting rid of the turtle. And you do feel like when you're playing an underdog tank like this, that if I was to play another tier 8 premium tank, I wouldn't think anything of 2,000. 300 damage in this game. I was actually really chuffed so far to have thought through getting through that situation. And it's when I'm streaming and I, I play my poll tanks where I get everybody who's watching to go and vote on the vehicles that they want me to play and then I play the most popular ones that I definitely am tested and I play some of the more interesting tanks along the way. And this is one of them. I expect some people voted for this just to try and deliver me a challenge or to try and see me suffer towards the latter part of an evening of World of Tanks, right? That's the last thing that you want towards the end of an evening of World of Tanks to have to play absolute stinkers like this. But it just actually ended up making me feel great that we had that one good game out of 10 or 20 that you can still do okay in a vehicle like this. These vehicles aren't meant to be flashy. They're not vehicles that can afford to sit on a ridge line and expose their horrendous weak points. They're not vehicles that can really sit and expose their uh, horrendous armor. They're not vehicles that can use their mobility because as we can see here, even though the top speed lim limit of the tank is 40, it never really goes above 30 because of a poor power to weight ratio combined with horrendous ground resistances and the fact that it's also quite a heavy tank. It's not really going to spot for itself at decent distances either. Yeah, I, I, I think you can all see exactly why this vehicle ends up with a horrendous win ratio of an average of just over 46%, at least on the European server. That means that for every player out there who ends up going and getting 50% wins in this tank, uh, there's somebody out there who's also getting 42% uh, wins in this tank. And if there's some crazy, sweaty, unicorn who's actually managing to make this thing work purely because they're a, a great player and they're nailing 60% wins. Well, that in theory must mean there's somebody out there getting 32% wins, right? Yeah, this is definitely one of the most horrible tanks in the game. But you know what one saving grace of playing horrible tanks in the game is? Well, after my team manages to finally finish off the SU-130 PM, I can show you. And that is that even when you don't feel like you've had the best games, you know, getting 1,172 base experience points because everybody else is doing so badly in these absolutely awful vehicles that you still get an ace tanker anyway. It is literally the only saving grace of playing with these terrible tanks is that feeling at the end that they're, they're going to pin a badge on you for something that wouldn't even get a third class medal in something like a Borask. I must give a big shout out to Cola, one in the TNH 105 1000. They had a real good game. Look at that, 1,485 base experience. And I felt that we gave each other really good support in the town to allow us to be able to come through this one. And it wasn't just because we were playing against chumps on the enemy team. I checked out the win ratio of the turtle in the post-game stats. I believe they're winning about 54, 55% of their games. And when they're playing a top tier, well, everybody was top tier when there's plus zero, minus zero, right? When they're playing a very powerful premium tank destroyer like that, and you're sitting in the AMX 65T, oh, it's oh so much sweeter when you manage to deliver three rounds into them and shut them down in the game. So what would I do to uh, fix the AMX 65T? Well, you know, how about firstly giving it a hull that isn't just gigantic and awful? Or how about making it so the turret doesn't have one of the world's biggest weak points on top? Or alternatively, I don't know, possibly a gun that just doesn't feel as if it's positively lackluster because it's already been in the game since the inception with the AMX 5100. Well, not the inception, I'd like to clarify, since they added in the French autoloaders along with the AMX 50B and then gets thrown on this tank in some sort of pseudo single shot version with horrible aim time and awful gun handling. And I'd like to conclude as I began that it's absolutely atrocious that the AMX 65T is near the bottom of the win ratio of every single tier 8 tank inside the game. Whereas when we look at its tier 9 bigger brother, there it is, sitting a whole half a percentage above 
vehicles even like the T95. So if any of you out there are suffering with this vehicle, I wouldn't usually say spend the free experience, but hopefully you can manage to get some blueprints. And when you finally get to the Amex M451, whew, will it be worth it? Uh, I guess that's down to you and something you can only decide. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed something a little bit different here, playing awful tanks and hopefully still making them work. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And also let me know in the comments what kind of tanks you'd like to see me feature next on this kind of a worst tanks in World of Tanks series. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And I'm pleased that all of you have voted for British medium tanks. And so come along right now as I showcase the entirety of the British medium line so you can see if they're any good in 2021. And I know there's there's a certain tank along there that I might be a little bit famous for liking. Hopefully I'm going to have a few games or two along as we wake the way up the tech tree, culminating with the awesome Centurion Action 10. Awesome? Well, we'll have to find out whether it's going to be the Centurion Awesome X or whether it's going to be the Centurion Awful X tonight. Anyway, really looking forward to seeing all of you live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.